Hello and welcome to Views on News. I'm Javad Hami. Pakistan has been a long ally of the U.S. and Pakistan has done so much for the U.S. over the number of decades. Being a key ally in the U.S. campaign against the Soviets in Afghanistan, Pakistan has been the key ally in the war on terror after 9-11 and Pakistan played a crucial role in the Afghan peace and reconciliation process also. However, the relation between Pakistan and the U.S. turned sour, especially after the Taliban takeover of Kabul. And uh, most recently, we have seen the high-level engagements between Pakistan's top officials with the U.S. top officials. And uh, it has provided the platform for both the sides to engage uh, and uh, put the relation on a new trajectory. Uh, similarly, uh, America is also helping Pakistan out in uh, dealing with the devastation that has been caused by by floods uh, recently in uh, Pakistan. Now, Chief of Army Staff General Kamar Javed Bajwa is also in the U.S. and he had the meeting uh, with uh, the Defense Secretary General Lloyd Austin and also National Security Advisor Jacob Sullivan and Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman and Inter-Services Public Relations Statement uh, regarding this particular meeting says matters of mutual interest, regional security situation and bilateral cooperation in different fields were also discussed uh, during the meeting. Similarly, a readout by the U.S. Defense Department says this long-standing partnership continues today with discussions focused on opportunities to address key mutual defense interests. Uh, we'll uh, delve deeper into discussion uh, to look into the various aspects of the uh, different contours of Pakistan-U.S. relationship and the current dynamics of it. Before delving deeper into the discussion, uh, we'll uh, play a report our production team has prepared for you, after which we'll introduce our panelists with you. Republic of Pakistan, which occupies a very significant geopolitical geographical position on the world's map and is engaged diplomatically with Central Asia, Middle East and South Asia, is recently being declared important for the United States' national interest, respective policies and overall influence of the United States in the global politics by a report prepared by American scholars of South Asian affairs associated with Pakistan's study group Washington. The report suggested that the United States and Pakistan need to build a modest and practical relationship relationship with the approach focused on interdependency and mutual benefits. The report suggested that Pakistan's valued relationship with China and renewed relationship approaches with Russia has to be taken care of by the United States whenever it's the matter of devising the policies involving Pakistan. The report also notes that public opinion in both the United States and Pakistan act as constraints on bilateral relations. The authors also argue that the United States' engagement with Pakistan would benefit if it were based on a realistic appraisal of Pakistan's policies, aspirations and worldview. We just watched this report, a report by the Pakistan Study Group uh, uh, that comprises the uh, scholars who specialize in the South Asian affairs has released uh, a report and that goes on to say it is not in the American national security interest to isolate Pakistan or irreparably breach the partnership uh, with Pakistan. Uh, let's uh, jump into the discussion. We are privileged and honored to have been joined in the studio by Dr. Muazzam Ali Hashmi, who is an expert in foreign affairs. He has served as political affairs advisor to the U.S. Consulate General in Karachi, holds a PhD in Peace and Conflict Studies. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Hashmi, for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me. We are also being joined on the Skype uh, by Mr. Abid Latif Sindhu. He is a senior analyst. Mr. Abid Latif Sindhu, thank you very much for your time at Views on News. Also, we really appreciate that. And uh, let's begin the discussion uh, with you, Dr. Hashmi. Uh, there is a report by the Pakistan Study Group, and uh, there are American scholars which specialize in South Asian affairs and it clearly states that uh, US engagement with Pakistan would definitely be in the interest of the US and isolating Pakistan wouldn't be in the US national interest. Your take on that? Sir. Yes, uh, international relations do not operate in solitary. The nation state system uh, works in collaboration in a wider network. And Pakistan is a responsible state and international, like international state system, it operates within certain values and rules. And Pakistan follows that and every other country follows that, number one. So when we are talking about General Wajwa's uh, ongoing visit, it's a routine, professional visit, 
like any professional army chief does, number one. Number two is that what the talks he is holding, whatever the political rhetoric within the country is, aside that just keep it to the professional level, number one. And when we are talking about the Pakistan study groups, I personally know some of the scholars in it. They always suggest give a realistic picture. Now, how that is taken by the political regimes and other priorities of national interest, that is another thing. And uh, I never say that uh, revival, um, you can say that, but you know, we have never broken ties with the US. You know, there might be some upheavals and all that. And it all governs on the basis of national interest, US and Pakistan whatever suits you. It is not a kind of a romantic thing, it is a real politic that we have to pursue and this is what is happening. And I see General Vazwa's current visit and his statement uh, regarding many other aspects uh, brings a hope in this US-Pakistan relations and Pakistan need strong partners. Like some rhetoric in the within the political cadre in Pakistan. Uh, they suggest different weird kind of a wild thoughts whatever they are having. But you see, you cannot operate in isolation. You go with the, where the world is going and you cannot break ties or live alone, particularly with the global powers. Dr. Hashmin, the report also says that U.S. engagement with Pakistan <coughs> should be modest but pragmatic and it should be based on mutual respect and not on exaggerated expectations. When this report talks about the exaggerated expectations, what does that imply? Well, we have all, all experienced that my way or the highway that was an exaggerated expectation because as a sovereign state you know we have other priorities as well and we also operate within a region with countries some hostiles or some less hostile and this is how we are operating. So expecting us that you know forgetting Pakistan's own national interest and just fo follow the dictates of something that this is what is exaggeration is and some in the past in the US administration have done that. And you know we responded accordingly, uh, responsibly as a sovereign state. Uh, let's uh, let's bring in uh, Mr. Sindhu as well. So, Mr. Sindhu, what's your take uh, regarding this particular report uh, that urges the Americans to engage with Pakistan and not um, go for inducement or threats because it's not going going to be in the national interest of the Americans? Yeah, yeah. Actually, as uh, Dr. Saab was saying, you know. All the rational players in the international system, they are bound to engage with each, each other. You know, uh, whatever, even if, if, if they are national interest, some or the other. But as you say that, uh, what are the, uh, you know, what, what, what actually is, you know, happening between, right now, between Pakistan and USA is, we have to, you know, put a little light on the historical uh, baggage which we have. We actually enjoy a sort of a secularity uh, type of a thing between the relationship of USA and Pakistan in which uh, we remained at the either end of the pendulum. On one side, the relations were sometimes very big and the other time uh, it was uh, full of apathy. So we have seen Summington uh, uh, Amendment, we have seen Pressler Amendment, we had seen uh, uh, you know the uh, good allied status all and downs. So we have gone through all this. But I think now USA has realized that re engage the market and to have a sort of a pragmatic market. And that is based on, I think, four pillars. And they are uh, trying to build and edify out of those four pillars. And uh, uh, they are also trying to make those pillars separated and separated from each other. First is the areas where the interests are divergent. And this is uh, as far as concerning the China, India, and Afghanistan, where the interests between USA and Pakistan are a sort of diverging. Because, uh, you know, uh, China, uh, USA has realized that it cannot win the zero sum competition uh, with China. And the competition with China is now has started to consume the foreign policy of USA thereby actually mitigating the influence in a very subtle way, although, and as far as the India is concerned, USA is uh, now focusing more on the bilateral track with India as far as the region is concerned, except the China. 
and in afghanistan they have also realized that walking away has never worked out and this time also it will never work worked out and for that they have to as you alluded to the fact that, that these three uh, countries remain to be the divergent points between Pakistan and yeah. the U.S. Yeah. Now, let's begin. Uh, this report delves deeper onto various aspects of the relationship uh, with, the, with these three countries between Pakistan and the U.S. Uh, uh, let's focus uh, primarily on Afghanistan. You know, Pakistan has been a key ally with the U.S., not only in the war on terror before that, uh, in its campaign against the Soviets, drawing them out of Afghanistan, and then played a crucial role in the Afghan peace and reconciliation process. So what What's led to the U.S. trust deficit towards Pakistan? You see, uh, Afghanistan is actually, you know, USA has uh, sort of, you know, engaged in Afghanistan in a very ad hoc way. So Pakistan was made to be part of ad hoc wars and they have never actually calculated or they have never actually considered the strategic calculus of Pakistan because Pakistan is also a uh, neighbor to Afghanistan, we have a uh, deep and very cultural affinity, which actually uh, goes back to centuries. And uh, so uh, USA's engagement was, although in their term was strategic, but the regional part of it or the connectivity or the relationship which Pakistan enjoys or the dependence with which Afghan people have over pa on Pakistan, I think they uh, actually did not, uh, uh, you know, consider it in their strategic calculus. But this time, once they have left Afghanistan and they are trying to, uh, you know, re-engage themselves in the region and particularly with both Pakistan and Afghanistan, I think they have uh, this realization this time around that uh, they cannot have the region stabilized without including Afghanistan and without including all the segment of the Afghanistan, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the politics into their strategic calculus. The campaign, as we know about the campaign, the war on terror by the U.S. and 20 years of that campaign in Afghanistan in order to stabilize Afghanistan and to install such sort of a setup that could be inclusive and sustainable. But at the end of the 20 years, we saw something very otherwise. That was exactly what Pakistani authorities didn't wanting because a peaceful and a stable Afghanistan remains to be the uh, remains to be in the interest of Pakistan. So where did exactly the diversion? happened you see the diversion happened actually into their I, have, I would say into their strategic calculus every war you can win a war by three things if you have three ingredients number one is the geography number two is the tactics and the third is the technology so they were very much superior in technology as far as their engagement in Afghanistan is concerned but they actually never considered that geography and the tactics which is also part of the culture that also counts a lot and uh, once you are, uh, you know, you are, you have uh, uh, sort of engaged yourself uh, to uh, get rid of a particular terrorist organization and you don't have a long haul or a strategic plan to actually engage with the people, then it ends up the way it ended in Afghanistan, that, you has, that USA has to leave and they have to leave uh, with the mess as spread out as it was there, even if they came before sort out of the problem of on the part of the Americans. Uh, let's yeah, bring yeah. in uh, Dr. Hashmi. So, so what's your take vis-a-vis uh, -vis Afghanistan? Pakistan has been very clear that Pakistan wants a peaceful and stable Afghanistan. And that was particularly the intention of the U.S. when they launched the campaign of war and terror in Afghanistan 20 years before. Yes. Peaceful relations with Afghanistan is the pivot that we, re that we reiterate time and again. The problem, you know, uh, the relevant analyst, uh, he mentioned that the historical relations. What historical relations? See, they have already been chaotic, never been pro-Pakistan you know, in the past 75 years, if you look at that, even beyond that. Barring a very brief stint that ended in 2001 of Taliban's, then Taliban, right? Now, factors is that, number one, I don't think so as much as I know U.S. and their style of thinking with my own professional experience. I don't think they miscalculate anything. It's not miscalculation. It might not be according to our or somebody, someone else's wishes. But it, it didn't uh, turn out to be in a complete victory after 20 years. No. In my opinion, 
nobody go for a, an, all, uh, an all out complete victory. What they wanted, in my opinion, they have achieved their goals. They have developed their assets over there. They do not need large deployment over there because the war theater has to be shifted elsewhere and it has, right? And they, there, is, there was no need to further engage with them. Let China deal with whatever is happening over there because China has a uh, you know, big stakes over there in mineral exploitation, CPAC or pipeline BRI and all that. So let China deal with that. Why should they focus their energies on it? Now, when we are talking about Afghanistan and Taliban in particularly, I have seen them in the past 40 years always been ungrateful. Pakistan is the only city, only country which is still hosting the largest population of refugees, any way displaced refugees in anywhere in the world. We are still doing that. Now, if you don't want to recognize the fencing, this is the Taliban irritation number one. You don't, you want a free country as you used to go around, right? Now, you start charming with India against Pakistan. Of course, we have to have an objection against it. You know, it's against our national interest. When Taliban came, India ran away. Now they have reopened the embassy in Kabul and you know, all that things have started. Another irritation is that we simply ask them with, based on our information that bring us Walana Masood Azhar, jesh e Muhammad, and they, they denied that. We have even have said that in Kunar or um, Nangarhar programs, there is a possibility of okay, camps and you know, presence of uh, Masood Azhar, give it to him. They simply denied it. Another point is that time and again, they revert this way or that way, you know, they forget. Sometimes they talk about TTP favoring us or not favoring us. They don't realize that they, I would say that Taliban need a corrective lens to see the dynamics. Now, as for the reality, Taliban's are forced to reckon with seasoned, hardened military force, no doubt about it, right? And the problem is that meanwhile Taliban in the past 30 years uh, gaining military experience. Others in Afghanistan, they were gaining political and administrative experience. That Taliban is still lack. A year ago they came and you know, now they realize that okay, governance is something else, state cross is something else, fighting in the battlefield is something different. Now they, this is their problem and this is their frustration. Right. Right, uh, Dr. Hashmi, your point is well taken. We'll delve deeper into another aspect of this uh, regarding the humanitarian crisis yeah. the Afghans uh, are faced with after uh, the international troops withdrawal. We are now joined by another participant in the show, Mr. Najmut Saqib, who is a former ambassador. He's joining us from South Africa on the phone line. Mr. Saqib, thank you very much for your time at Views on News. So uh, there is a report by Pakistan Study Group uh, that comprises of uh, the American scholars uh, who specialize in uh, the South Asia affairs. Uh, the report says that there, uh, there are certain divergent areas between Pakistan and the US and Afghanistan remains to be one of those. Since uh, we have been discussing early in the show uh, that the war on terror, the campaign the US had for 20 years in, the, uh, in Afghanistan and Pakistan had the same uh, goal of having peaceful and stable Afghanistan. So why does it remain to be a divergent area between the US and Pakistan? Thank you. God, I, I can uh, hear me all right. Uh, let us first of all see what is the significance of this report as it is just a proposal, a set of recommendations by some private that contains Washington's official position. We might never know what the U.S. is doing. As it coincides with the visit of COS to America, and his meetings with high U.S. military officials. The important recommendation to me in the report is that engagement with Pakistan is in the U.S. interest as well. Engagement with Pakistan is in the U.S. And in this regard, Pakistan's geographical importance has been highlighted along with saying that it possesses nuclear arms, etc. The second aspect is cooperation as anti-U.S. equation. sino pak cooperation has been seen as something which is not, a, you know, they were engaged with Pakistan when U.S. and China are at a low point of relations 
is very important according to the PFG rule. The level of knowledge which you have already referred to, uh, this is very important to understand what does it mean. Uh, it, the PFG feels that now uh, Pakistan-US relations are at the lowest ebb. So let us start with the modest level of engagement, you know, which is starting all you know, uh, trajectory of relation. There are a few facts that I would like to, you know, highlight uh, to you for eminent uh, uh, fact number one is that U.S. is annoyed at Pakistan right now. As, you know, with regard to Afghanistan, Taliban, and we have seen U.S. reaction to TF, Patterns, and I. Secondly, U.S. is annoyed because of our pro-China stance and policy. Especially, you know, the conspiracy and the game change here and absolutely not and all the Some kind of annoyance in Washington. Fact number two, U.S. wants engagement in counterterrorism, security, and border issues. Whereas Pakistan's concern relates mainly to factors. There are only four factors. Third factor, U.S. will not play any role in addressing the issue. This is what the uh, highlights that U.S. is any role in addressing Kashmir issue. Uh, what does it mean? Mr. 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 Saki, Mr. 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 Saki, beg your pardon, beg your pardon <coughs> for the interruption. Unfortunately, there is a distortion and we can't hear you properly. So we'll try to reconnect to you uh, in a short while from now. So, uh, Dr. Hashmi, when we yes. talk about, uh, in specific, about Afghanistan, uh, since the uh, withdrawal of the international troops from Afghanistan, there had been a dire situation there, the humanitarian and the economic crisis. So this report goes on to say that uh, despite the divergent ideas and uh, uh, the understanding of the situation in Afghanistan, both the U.S. and Pakistan can cooperate in order to alleviate the sufferings of the people. How can both the countries do that? Yes. Uh, I wrote a detailed article before the OIC summit over here, Foreign, Affairs, Foreign Minister's uh, extraordinary meeting over here that was on Afghanistan. So I highlighted all that. I will tell you something, few of the important points. At that point and still, and they have multiplied six major epidemic outbreaks that Afghanistan is facing since the start of the winters, right? There is a shortage of food over there, right? Look at the problems, government's problems Taliban government is facing. They need to address that. And then food security problem, shelter problem, and then you know you have a foreign relations problem. And this situation of uh, plight of the people, it seems that, in my observation, you may disagree, it seems that Afghanistan probably is divided into two major ethnic groups. The Pashtun speakers who are ruling and rest of the people, the re speakers and etc. Right? And most of the people who are in trouble, they are from the other ethnic group. It seems that they might be considered as the children the of... The entire Afghanistan yeah. is being governed by the Afghan Taliban. Yes, no doubt. I said other people are being comparatively ignored in the devastation, right? They have been ignored uh, and, you know, there are uh, 40, of the 40, 400 million, you know, 40 percent or f almost uh, 40 or 50 percent of the population using a dire need of serious uh, that is what exactly the entire world knows uh, yes, that exactly. Afghans are facing a dire economic and a humanitarian situation. After the international troops withdrawal, the U.S. froze their assets. Pakistan's Prime yes. Minister Shabazz Sharif during his address and on the sidelines of the recent U.N. General Assembly session urged uh, uh, Americans to unfreeze those assets. Mm -hmm. So uh, in one aspect, that measure, do you think, can help? Uh, the Afghans deal with this situation in the immediate yes, certainly terms. money is always very helpful uh, in most of the cases uh, and to resolve and address issues. The problem is that when Afghanistan, uh, then Taliban came in the government last year, it's a year and a, half, a month over now, they promised certain things and they have failed to live with their promise, right? 
it is uh, 381 days girls are out of school in Afghanistan that was one of the big promise and that was a strategic political mistake at the hands of Taliban. They could have let the women work and you know what world would be happening. They thought that now we are in a power, we can twist arms. That certainly does not work, twisting arms, that is what they thought. Uh, that will increase the difficulty of getting recognized exactly. as a legitimate government. And so let us bring in and Mr. So also Sakhir. to get unfreeze their assets, assets it is well. not going to happen just like that. Right, Mr. Najmu Saqib, former ambassador from South Africa is joining us again. Um, uh, Mr. Saqib, unfortunately we could not hear the three important points that you were highlighting. First, I could not understand it was pro-China policy of Pakistan that makes the U.S. annoyed towards Pakistan. So if you would like to repeat the other two points also. Uh, I'm sorry, line interruption. I was just telling that we, we need to see the facts, you know. Fact number one is that U.S. is annoyed at Pakistan. And as the panelists are highlighting, the Taliban policy of Afghanistan and our pro-China policies, which are seen in Washington as anti-U.S. policies, the recent events, past, uh, you, you know, you can say two or three years, uh, ending in regime change, conspiracy, absolutely not, etc. All these things have annoyed, uh, seriously annoyed the U.S. And we have seen the ramifications of this annoyance in shape of more, you know, complications in IMF and FATF and all that. So, Mr. Second Saka, fact do you, is that U.S. See, wants do you engagement. Any thaw now uh, after the high-level engagements of the Pakistan top officials on the sidelines of the UNGA with the U.S. top officials, because the U.S. is helping Pakistan out in mitigating, uh, mitigating the impacts of climate change, also. Yes, yes, yes. Climate change, we have no issue. In fact, U.S. is uh, in the forefront. And then, then there is another development approval of $450 million uh, sustenance deal uh, to sustain the F-16 fleet in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. That is a separate issue as far as climate change is concerned, energy resources are concerned, and other, uh, you know, uh, uh, non-military, non-political, non-diplomatic issues are concerned. We have no problems with the U.S. The problem is in the political field, in the diplomatic field, and more importantly, with, with regard to Pakistan, in the economic field. U.S. wants only right now, after the withdrawal of NATO and its own forces from Afghanistan, it wants Pakistan's you know, contribution and attention only to three areas. The terrorism, security issue, and border issue. This is the main problem with, uh, you know, uh, within Pakistan and uh, the U.S., because Pakistan wants to give emphasis to its trade and commerce relations with the U.S., whereas, uh, you know, still in the punishment mode, uh, the United States is not ready to talk about any commercial ties or trade ties. That is one area uh, where, uh, you know, uh, Foreign Minister Zardari and uh, Bani Khar and all those people who have visited uh, during the 77th session of UNGA, they, they highlighted the thing that Pakistan, particularly in, in you know, in the context of ongoing flood, Pakistan's economy uh, needs uh, uh, special attention from the U.S. and the West and its allies. Why? Because uh, the geographical uh, importance aside, Pakistan has been a strategic partner of the U.S. and the misgivings and misunderstandings must be cleared. And I can tell you and your uh, panelists and all the viewers that are watching you that positive things have started happening. So positive uh, thing has started happening. happening. Mr. Sake, when we talk about uh, the pro-China policy, as you mentioned, of Pakistan that annoys um, uh, the U.S. also, we uh, saw statements coming uh, from the spokesperson of the State Department, Mr. Ned Price, and uh, uh, earlier in the year, he said Islamabad doesn't need to strain its relations with China to maintain ties with uh, Washington. So what does that mean? You know, Jawad, you know, Jawad the, the thing is that we don't understand, many of us, we don't understand China's disposition, their culture, history, and their foreign policy. China would be the last country to tell any, any friend like Pakistan to break ties or to annoy anyone. China is a peaceful country and China is 
first country which has been asking urging pakistan to have good relations with all including the united states of america so it is not a problem with china the problem is with the us the us and then the indian angle in it because the us is using india let me be very frank and candid the us has been using india as the policeman of south asia and the china containment policy of nato eu the us the whole us troops uh, you know uh, that that uh, india uh, is there as, as a tool against china as a counter you know uh, force or counter factor against china so when that comes into fact naturally the kashmir issue or pakistan india relations are at the back so uh, you know as you ask me uh, there is no problem with china china does not want the problem lies well, the, these, that these, in these, pakistan Mr. Sakhin, these and statements everywhere. are from the us side uh, us state department spokesperson ned price on february the 4 2022 said islamabad doesn't need to strain its relations with china to maintain ties with the us and it went I, further I heard you, to state i heard you jawad Uh, it's not really I, specific I, I, to pakistan mr sakib uh, it is uh, with the entire that world was, he that was a statement that was a statement if that price says you know the real policy is that when it when you come to the podium to the rostrum to issue certain statements that is a different dynamic what actually you want what what actually you desire is an entirely different ball game since i understand the diplomatic nuances of these statements i can assure you that pakistan that us does not want any sino pakistan relations growing because pakistan you know pakistan being a very close friend of china uh, is not like washington you know may it be obama may it be you know blinken or biden they don't like it now the challenge is for us the challenge is for us as diplomats and our friends and our foreign minister and prime minister and that is that how to convince washington how to convince washington that our pro china policy does do not mean that it is anti us policy and that is where the role of diplomacy comes into play right that we have to convince them our relations with china have got nothing to do with sino us animosity our cooperation with china is purely on the economic basis and it has got nothing to do with the cold war or the trade war with you know between us and china or any problems which china might have created in the eyes of washington so that is a challenge for us unfortunately us is buying that argument right mr najmu sagib thank you very much for your time your point is well taken quite elaborately uh, elaborately you described how pakistani diplomats can actually maintain a balance uh, between china and the us former ambassador joining us from south africa dr hashmi i uh, will go to mr sindhu first and let's take yeah. Uh, his take regarding uh, U.S. Uh, stance regarding Pakistan's relations with China, as Mr. Sakib said, that it annoys uh, the U.S. The statements uh, publicly could be different, but uh, the things uh, on the ground uh, seem to be very different, and it remains to be a challenge for Pakistan's diplomats. Mr. Uh, Sindhu, your take, uh, your take on this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, just a word. Ashmi was saying that uh, uh, probably he thought that I have mentioned that Pakistan and U.S. had very historical relation. I just said that we had historical baggage, not the historical relations which I was trying to, uh, you know, identify. As far as I was earlier, also I was trying to explain that now, in my opinion, uh, as far as the real politic and the new emerging realism is concerned, I think U.S. has divided. Uh, the relationship between usa and pakistan in four segments one was the divergent which we have talked in elaboration and i will also uh, you know take on the china uh, question which you have said the other was convergence which we had which, which we are which we are having in as far as the middle east is concerned and the western world is concerned and central asia is concerned and then the commonality commonality is uh, between uh, in the areas of economic activity and the strategic which are not emerging i think at this moment we have seen that 
there are information stress now this is trying to second blocks uh, and us is trying bifurcate that part and the good part of its relation with every country it is for example we say both them in critical pakistan pakistan very good relation with them. so usa is modifying its policy as far as uh, as vis-a-vis the pakistan is concerned uh, to pakistan most of the economic terms and also in 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 the regional terms and you know as far as the neutrality of the interests are concerned usa and pakistan i think in my opinion they are not going to touch the kashmir issue they are also not going to touch the you know they are also not going to make the iran or other those uh, prickly subjects which can also you know make uh, uh, the, the, the relations or the convergence or some site of bonhomie uh, difficult in these two Mr. 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 Sindhu, very briefly, uh, why why won't the U.S. Um, uh, come on to the Kashmir issue? Uh, because it remains to be a sticking point between Pakistan and India. It remains to be crucial to be resolved as per the U.N. resolutions. It has once again been highlighted by Prime Minister during the U.N. G address as well. That is the reason is very simple because uh, U.S.A. is not taking uh, Kashmir as a major uh, uh, between its relation. Strategic relation with Israel. so as far as Kashmir is concerned, USA never wants to annoy their strategic balance, which is it is trying to strike with India, uh, particularly in the uh, Asia Pacific region, uh, region. So USA is trying to avoid Kashmir, but on the other side is trying to make a parallel sort of a bilateral track with Pakistan. on other issues which as uh, ambassador saab was saying on climate on economic relations and on technology transfer of technology and other all so many host of issues your take uh, uh, regarding pakistan's uh, relations with the us when it comes uh, to relationship with china how to maintain that balance between both the countries for the pakistan diplomats yes. as mr sakeb <laughs> already uh, alluded to the fact yeah. it's going to be a challenge for pakistan diplomats I agree with uh, Mr. Sindhu's uh, point that you know uh, it's uh, uh, an um, uh, former ambassador's uh, point that you know it's a revival of kind of a relationship uh, with the U.S. and like ambassador has mentioned that you know some people are unhappy in Washington. Some people are always unhappy. You cannot make everyone happy. This happens, right? The school of thought, but it does not mean that those unhappy element or too much happy element actually dictate the foreign policy. towards a specific it doesn't happen at least in the us kind of a liberal liberal democracy democracy model right so it it goes balance and with the priorities of your interests and our interests pakistan also going about that one development i see is that pakistan's sovereignty and its decision in its own foreign policy and priorities has been recognized not only recognized it has been respected also as the pakistan cd group has pointed out in the report at certain places so this is one development i see and you can say that is a kind of a new beginning or revival this happens all the time when you know their interest goes down they just drift away and our interest go down we drift away so it's something like this like mr <coughs> sindhu has pointed out that you know our irritated irritating issues with india will not be definitely addressed so they will so, remain uh, yes uh, dr ashpi when specifically when we talk about pakistan's relation with china it's a long standing all weather yes. strategic yes. partnership as well uh, there'd been uh, cooperation in multi multiple domain domains between Pakistan and China CPAC yeah. remains to be the flagship project of uh, Belt and Road initiative so um, uh, these statements when come from the US side that US doesn't want Pakistan to strain its relations with China as Mr Sakib says that uh, the situation on the ground and on the podium remains to be different yes exactly this is what for public consumption you say something else and you know in reality in the policy decision making process you pursue other path right because everyone a common man doesn't understand the uh, fineness of the politics so this is actually what the case is i don't think uh, us uh, has mentioned in the statement that you know not very happy with further development of the pakistan china relation but it's not the case they do realize that how far we can go with that if you look at that angle look at 
India and China relationship, right? They have clearly sorted out political difference, Ladakh or even previous uh, skirmishes and all that. But you know they are having a great trade volume with India, projected to more than 15, 50 billion dollars by 2050. See, this is going on. So this is going along this side. So the world realize countries do realize there how it is going to work. So I don't think you know anybody is going to have a very serious big objection. Just you know you raise the flag that just be careful right. in case. This is how it I see right. it. Right, Dr. Mozam Ali Hashmi, expert foreign affairs. It was wonderful having you on the show today. We really appreciate uh, for you being here on Views on News. And uh, we were also joined by Mr. Abid Latif, Sindhu senior analyst on Skype. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Mr. Sindhu, uh, as well. Now, uh, there clearly seems to be a thaw in Pakistan's relations with the U.S. after, especially this relationship turned sour uh, after the takeover of Kabul by the Taliban. And uh, now we have seen high-level engagements. You have warned me, staff, General Kamajavid is also in the US. Uh, the US is helping Pakistan out uh, to uh, meet with the devastation caused by the recent floods. Also, a $450 million uh, deal has been approved. Uh, it seems uh, the positive uh, trajectory uh, between Pakistan and the U.S., the ties, the relations are going to be on a new trajectory. And uh, this saw would definitely lead both the countries uh, to do well in uh, the coming days. But at the same time, uh, this report suggests that uh, the engagement with Pakistani authorities of the U.S. officials is going to be in the national interest of the U.S. At the same time, the U.S. authorities need to understand the misery not only the Afghan people are facing right now after the international troops withdrawal, but also the kind of misery Kashmiris are facing under India's illegal subjugation. With this note, we come to the end of today's show. Until the next one, take very good care of yourselves.